Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a radical expression. We have x times the square root of x minus 10 times the square root of x equals 9. And we're going to evaluate x minus the square root of x. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to try to solve for x. How can I solve for x? Well, I could probably factor the square root of x out and write this as square root of x times x minus 10 equals 9. And obviously, you can try to, you know, guess and check the solution, but I don't think it's going to be that straightforward. So and then the next step could be squaring both sides. If you do that, like square this and square that, you're going to get x times x minus 10 squared equals 81. And then if you go ahead and expand this, x times x squared minus 20x plus 100 equals 81. Distribute x cubed minus 20x squared plus 100x minus 81 equals 0. So that's going to be our cubic. And if you kind of look at the rational solutions, possible rational solutions using the rational root theorem, you're basically going to be checking the factors of 81. It could be like as small as 1, as large as 81, and anything in between. So it could be like a 3, it could be like a 9, it could be like a 27, so on and so forth. And obviously the negative was as well. So there's a lot of candidates which you can try. Quick look will tell you that a quick look will actually tell you that 1 is a solution, right? Why? Because if you replace x with 1, then you get 1 minus 20 plus 100 minus 81. This is 101. This is 101. And the answer is 0. In other words, the sum of the coefficients of this cubic is 0, which means x equals 1 is a solution. Remember, if you're solving a polynomial equation, that's the first thing or one of the first things you should check. Always, always check that first. Make sense? Okay, hopefully it does. So we know that x equals 1 is a solution. How does that help? Well, if you replace x with 1 in the original problem. Oh, another thing that happens is because we squared both sides, Let's see what that's going to do to our equation. Anyways, replace x with 1 in the first equation. You're going to get 1 minus 10 equals 9. Uh-oh, that's not right. So you can't really use that x value because it doesn't satisfy the original equation. But why is that happening? Because when you square both sides, you're getting rid of the negatives, right? So in other words, like 1 does not equal negative 1, but 1 squared equals negative 1 squared. Make sense? So you can't conclude that because 1 squared equals negative 1 squared, 1 is equal to negative 1. Anyways, so these are called extraneous solutions. So they just pop up when you square both sides, you do stuff like that, but they, they don't actually satisfy the original problem. So x equals 1 is invalid, and if you plug it in, the, into the second expression, you're going to get 0, but unfortunately, that does not work. Make sense? Okay, so what do we do with that? Well, x equals 1 doesn't work, but maybe we're going to find other roots. Well, x equals 1 is going to help us factor this expression, because if you think about uh, dividing it by x minus 1, or just arranging the terms like this, x cubed minus x squared minus 19x squared plus 19x, plus 81x to get 100x, that's what we need, minus 81 does the trick, and now you have a factorable expression, take out x squared, take out minus 19x, and take out 81. Awesome. We knew that x1 minus 1 would be a factor, so take out that, and you get the quadratic x squared minus 19x plus 81. Okay, an interesting equation that contains 19 and 81, you know, they're up to 100. Anyways, so 
we know that x equals 1 is not going to work, so don't, don't worry about that. Let's focus on the quadratic. To solve this quadratic, let's use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 361, minus 4ac. If you multiply 81 by 4, you're going to get 324. And if you subtract these two numbers, you're going to get 37. Wow, that's pretty interesting, right? Such a nice number. Pretty close to 6, square root of 37, but uh, not exactly. So, we have this radical expression. What does this mean? It means x can be substituted. x can be replaced with these. Wait a minute, which one am I going to use? Does it matter? Well, it shouldn't matter as long as these numbers are in the domain, right? Let's separate them. And to be on the safe side, if you want, we can use the bigger one, which is the positive one. But if you actually really think about the original problem, I don't think it's going to matter. But let's go ahead and test it out. We have x root x minus 10 root x equals 9. So one of these roots or both of these roots hopefully will satisfy this equation. Oh, the only criteria I have here is basically x needs to be positive. And if you look at this, you're going to notice that both of these solutions are positive. So they should be good, but let's still go with the positive one to being extra cautious here. So if you replace x with that, hopefully you should be getting 9. You don't need to check. That should work, but rather plug it into the second equation. So our goal is to evaluate x minus root x, and we know that x is going to be replaced with that. So let's go ahead and do it. 19 plus root 37 over 2, and that minus the square root of that number, right? Well, how do you square root that number? Not too hard. I'll show you a really nice trick that will sim simplify the problem a great deal. Multiply the top and the bottom by 2. Remember, this radical contains both. So, like, write it as 38 plus 2 root 37 divided by 4. Now, notice that the top... Uh, we get two numbers whose product is 37 and whose sum is 38. Those numbers are 37 and 30, 37 and 1. So that means we can factor this as square root of 37 plus 1 squared. So we have to square root that. And at the bottom, we have the square root of 4, which is 2. Awesome. Now, we can basically take it out. And we have, com we have a common denominator. This is going to be minus root 37 minus 1 divided by 2. Root 37 is going to cancel out. 19 minus 1 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is going to be 9. So the answer should be 9. Let's keep a long story short and take a look at the second method. Obviously, the second method is going to be a lot nicer, a lot easier, right? That's why it's called the second method. Okay, my goal is to find x minus root x again. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a real cool trick that's used very often. I'm going to split the 10 root x or minus 10 root x into minus root x minus 9 root x. Notice that this is good because these two are going to make a nice pair and also 9 is going to match up with the 9. Now let's go ahead and throw away or not throw but put the 9 root x on the other side and then factor root x x minus 1 factor 9 root x plus 1. Now we're going to factor x minus 1 using difference of two squares which is root x plus 1 times root x minus 1, and then something magical is going to happen. Root x plus 1 is never going to be 0 because it's always positive. Cross it out, and then you end up with this. Distribute, you get x minus root x equals 9, and that's what we were looking for. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.